Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Wrath of the Righteous Let's Play Shadow Heart Edition. In our last episode, we finally got rid of Monaco. Well, kind of sort of, she ran away, as she always does. And we are now in the Crusader camp at the start of Act 2. I spoke with a few people, including uh, the storyteller in the last episode. I didn't get through all of his stories because, um, well, I was starting to run a little long on time. So I decided we're going to finish him off right now. And then we'll go look around for some other people to talk to before we get the uh, commander's tent meeting going. And if we're lucky enough, I might even have time to show off a little bit of the Crusader system that everybody knows and hates. <laughs> but before we get too far, there was, um, let's see. So it says, please examine here. I am sorry, carrying this to tell us the story, and there are quite a few items. More importantly, we got the broken buckle taken care of, so. And also, that reminds me, there's an item I need to give to, uh, Irabeth, but we'll do that in a second. Okay. Let me touch the analogy. Present Radiant. What do you see in its past? The storyteller touches the blade with his finger. Sadness rings in his voice. Dresden is doomed. Demons attacked right when we lost the protection of the Sword of Valor. My city, my passion of hope. We bow to you as a symbol that the lands mutilated by the Abyss could still be restored to mortals. Now you are perishing, and there is nothing I can do. We retreat. No, we flee. A frightened crowd rushes out into the night through the southern gate. They are chased by the angry howls of demons, killing the last defenders of the Citadel. My heart goes out to them. But I am standing still on the wall. I am covering the retreat. Demons do not attack. They see the round you fall from the sky, strike from all sides at once. They can't be stopped. They can be distracted. I run to the upper floor of the gate tower. Radiance glows with the golden light in my hands. I permit myself to close my eyes for just one heartbeat. I imagine that the soft glimmering of the sword I seek, see through my closed eyelids it's the light of the summer sun. I smile. I open my eyes and call out, Hey, Discari Spawn! Who wants the best trophy of the night? You know my name. Yaniel. You know how many of you I've killed with this very hand. You want to curry favor with Dara's hand? Minago or the echo of your lord? Bring them my head, if you can. Roaring and screaming, they rush toward me in a wave of deformed bodies and unfurled wings. The waves crash against me, splattering my armor with bloody froth. Broken wings and chopped up bodies plummet to the foot of the tower. In the heat of battle, I see Joran's face, pale face down there. He looks up at me in desperation, but he can't help! He's carrying two wounded on his shoulders. My city will fall, but my friends will survive! This is what I am fighting for. I am covering the retreat. The flow of fleeing people gradually dwindles. My armor is broken in many places, and I cannot heal my wounds anymore. The last demon I stabbed with Radiance suddenly recoils tearing the handle out of my blood-slickened hands. He flies up, but he falls somewhere far behind me. The walls, by the road, being taken by those fleeing. No more golden glow in my hands. The night closes in on me, filled with shrieking, mocking demon laughter. Dresden, I'm dying with you. Light of the sword, righteous I am today. Accept my soul. The storyteller runs his hand along the blade with a sad smile. I know whose memory this is. I've heard about her so many times. Yaniel was a true crusader. Touching her memories is so cleansing. Do you see the future of the sword? Just one of the numerous possibilities. The blind elf touches the sword hilt, and metal rings in his voice. I slide out of the sheath swiftly. I proudly watch the army of warriors led by my lady. I sing, slashing the air, putting courage in their hearts. I am Radiance. Tremble, city of Dresden! My lady Yaniel has perished, but I am not done yet. Charge! The storyteller returns the sword to you. It is nice to know that the sword's glory days are not over. There's many battles ahead. Take care of it. It is a glorious sword. He's not wrong there. <clears throat> and if you do enough work in the uh, later acts, you can restore it to full power, which I'm excited to try out, actually. Uh, show Terendalev's scale to the storyteller. Tell me about Terendalev. Not to worry, the storyteller takes a deep breath and smiles. I am flying. I can finally spread my wings. 
I am gliding over a broad river. The sunset has turned smooth, the surface smooth like a mirror, and I see my reflection. It is as if another silver dragon is rising to meet me from the depths. But what is it? The scales on my chest are black. The darkness is spreading over my body. I wake up. A clear sky sways above me, blazing with heat. I am in human form. The rest dust of the wound clings to my cracked lips. Someone is carrying me on a stretcher made of shields and spears. I am so weak I can barely lift my hands to my face. <coughs> the sight of my own hand terrifies me. It is black and the skin glistens like scales melted by fire. I probably ought to cry, but I only feel hatred and nausea. All these people around me, out of sympathy for them, did I choose to leave the mountains. I gave up my flight over rivers. I went to the demon's lair. They don't have a scratch on them, but I am infected with foulness. It's not fair. My life is more precious than their pathetic existence. Oh, how I hate them in this moment. And then I suddenly feel shame. No, no. These are not my thoughts. The crusaders carrying me are my good friends. I am glad they did not suffer. But I hate them and myself so much. Pain and hatred pierce me all at once. It's because of them. All because of them. Someone walking beside me touches me, talks to me. But the only thing I hear is, your mentor, he will come. He will help. And I lose consciousness. The storyteller takes a deep breath, exiting the vision. Such hatred. From Terendalev? Wasn't she on our side? Terendalev has come a long way. Her unit was ambushed by demons once, and she was infected with foulness. The Terendalev you met in Canabras has gone through many trials and regained her former purity. What happened next? <clears throat> the storyteller puts his hand to his forehead. Sometimes the past can be as vague as the future. We all know how Terendalev's story ended. But the beginning is hidden from us. Maybe if you find something else that would used to belong to her, we will know more about her struggle. However, no matter what we learn, remember, her soul, the soul of a true dragon, overcame every obstacle, endured every torment. She was able to purify herself. For dragons are truly powerful, not only in body, but in spirit too. He's talking of Terendalev's claw, of course. And if you find that and talk to the right people, then by uh, the fifth act, you can go on the Golden Dragon Path. I've never done that myself, and I've heard mixed views on it, so I don't know. I'll just have to see it for myself. So, Finian, tell me what you see. Hello, Grandpa Elf. The storyteller carefully takes Finian from your hands. Hello, Finian. He closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. His face contorts into a painful grimace. I... We're coming to again. How long have I been here? They kept me in the cage for three days. I know this because three times the light under the door disappeared for a long time. And they chained me to a table in the bladesmith. Everyone calls him the bladesmith. He plays a device with a jar over me. Feels like I'm being fried. At first, I tried to break free, but I got tired, and I screamed, but now I've lost my voice. Now the pain is burning right through me. The storyteller stops. His voice changes, becoming more frightened. I think I lost consciousness again, but when I woke up, the pain was gone, and I wasn't tied to the table anymore. I was standing near it, and someone else was lying on the table. Burned corpse covered with a black crust. The master took out a handsaw and was sawing off his head. In a very focused way. I should have run back then. But I couldn't for some reason. This burned corpse had a symbol on his belt. Just like I do. An eye and a star. My favorite belt. A good one. Where would a stranger get one? It must have been someone from my clan. Some distant family member. The storyteller stops. When he speaks again, you hear only a muffled whisper. These crusaders, I... I was glad when I saw them. I thought they'd come to help, but how? How was it that I killed them all? Someone told me to, and I obeyed. I don't understand. I understand nothing now. I... I need to catch my breath. I need all this to stop, even just for a minute. I just have to... have to understand what's happening to me. I just need to rest. The storyteller shakes his head, slowly coming to his senses. 
That is Finian's past. But what awaits him in the future? The dead have no future, but... The storyteller smiles. I see an endless ocean on a good day in a boat flying over the waves. I am so excited. But I don't know whose vision this is. Is this a soul existing here and now? Or soul reborn? Thank you for your story. So the storyteller gives Finian back to you. Please take care of the young lad. He's finally in the right hands. Do not worsen his suffering by involving him in his in dishonorable deeds. Come on, Grandpa Elf. I can take care of myself. I'm not a kid. I don't know what horrors you're talking about, but don't you worry about it, alright? Look after yourself. Oh, poor Finian. If you only knew. And here, give the storyteller the broken buckle and the necessary materials. Restore this relic for me. And before I do this, um, it turns out there are other relics that need to be restored as well, and I don't think I've ever restored them before, so I'll definitely be keeping an eye on how much magic essence I have. We get some experience for it, and we even get an item. The elf cautiously uncorks the vials and begins to work his enchantments. The essence evaporates, turning into light that streams into the buckle. The light thickens, becoming gold. The Covenant of the Inheritor. That is the name of this relic. This buckle once adorned the belt of a glorious knight from Mindef. It is the embodiment of a promise made to a young girl by a powerful deity. A great promise that has changed so much in this world. <clears throat> yes, this is. And I think we can craft that into something uh, later on. So, yeah. When you touch the restored relic, a strange vision comes to you. It's as if you can see the events that happened to, to it in the past. Burning sensations spread across your chest from the very spot where your mysterious wound sometimes opens. What is this? The influence of the story to tell spells? Or is it something else? I had a vision! The old elf frowns. How strange! You're a remarkable soul! No one has ever shared my visions before! <coughs> I gotta stop drinking sodas while I'm doing this. What do you think cost it? Perhaps these things have something to do with your destiny, or the fate of someone related to you. I do not have an answer, only advice. Seek out such relics. Look for what links them all, and you will know the truth. Alright, we have more important things to do. Uh, let's see here. I think I already... Yeah, we already went through this. Okay. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -da 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 Stories, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Have you decided to join the crusade? I have decided not to, I'm afraid. My path and the path of the crusade leads in the same direction, but alas, they are not yet one and the same. After the demons were driven away from Canabras, the path into the world wound became open, if only temporarily. Planning on using this opportunity to visit the Elf Falls Silence. It doesn't matter now. I'd hate to bore you with the details of my venture which may prove useless even for myself. However, I'll try to return to the Crusades and aid them in their confrontation with the demons after I'm done. I hope to meet you again in this world rather than the next. I have to go. I wish you interesting adventures. Yes, after, um, I think it might be after the encampment changes location. It will as we go through the map, but the storyteller will disappear. So if you're planning on doing this stuff, and, I mean, we'll see him one again when we go to uh, Dresden. But, you know, make sure you turn your stuff into him if you want to see that done. Uh, and let's see. Unfortunately, we can't talk to Erebeth just yet. Uh, who's there a chance? Let's take a look. This is mine and Anivia's tent. We're both used to traveling, but the queen insisted our tent <laughs> to be furnished like a commanding officer's. Aw, he's got their own beds. <laughs> Why the hell are the married couple sleeping like? Oh, I know. Uh, let's see here. I know, right? Can't afford a bed for everyone. Actually, the funny thing is, beds are placed really close together. I don't know. Maybe maybe they just couldn't afford the right kind of bed. Uh, let's see. Some pearls. There's a sigh and some gold and stuff, stuff. And we got wand of cat's grace because. I, uh, it's funny, it, oh, the, when the mod, uh, succeeds like that, it always seems to give me a wand. I don't know if I like that, but, yeah. Let's see, here, some books. One of these days, I might sit down and read some of these books. 
I just to, you know, give myself something else to do. The interludes have been actually kind of fun to put together, actually, and I've gotten on quite a bit of, I've gotten quite a bit of attention, which is kind of cool. Let's see here. Okay. Nothing there. Uh, yeah, I need to, I need to sell my shit. <laughs> we'll go to the commander's tent last, but for now, let's keep looking around. Uh, let's see here. Fire and the sword. We'll take that. And we'll leave our things. Chapleton. Now, the cool thing about your weight limit is that even if it's, like, way, way up, you'll move around normally in the... We outfitted this tent to be used as our chapel. Even the less pious crusaders will come here to say their prayers when the final battle is upon us. I have seen it happen in my previous campaigns. And yeah, they have quite a few deities, in fact. Here's Altar of Saren, right? The Healing Light, the Goddess of the Sun, Healing and Redemption. Ah. I wonder what Tristian got up to when, King, when Kingmaker ended. I'll have to find out. Altar of Desna, the Great Dreamer, the Goddess of Freedom, Travel, Luck, and Dreams. Basically, this game's Mistra. This place has been sanctified. by... Oh, yes, this is uh, one of those things where... And you don't even have to come in here. You just be out in the camp in your whatever... Uh, yeah, corruption you've picked up will go away. Let's see. And then over here, at the head of the tent... Unsurprisingly, is Ultra Ryomedy, the light of the sword. God's for justice, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, 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 I love you too, honey. Our Ultra of Aristil, Old Deadeye, the god of hunting, farming, and a quiet pastoral life. Cool. And Ultra of Torag, the father of creation, the dwarven god of craft and kin. I'm kind of surprised you don't have an elven. Well, never mind. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. Don't be afraid to loot things. Nobody gives a shit, honestly. It's kind of hilarious that they don't, but hey, my money, I guess. All right, we'll go in here. Oh, oh that did not taste well. This is a field hospital. I'll ask the clerics of Cannabis have suffered, especially um, have you lost the sword in desperate need of healers? We are few, but the gods are with us. The prayers of good people around the world are with us. And then, of course, the silly Rathams. Dear lady, you've been standing here for a long time. Would you like to help? There's Camellia. <laughs> Camellia and her silly looking hat. <laughs> Who, me? No, I definitely would not. No, of course, we can't have such a noble and pure, pious lady next to these dead bodies. Please, act like I'm not here. I just like to watch people work. Yeah, she likes to watch people work, right? <laughs> and then she likes to work after she's done watching them. Oh! Anyway, here's what's like. A stout old man with a fuzzy gray beard greets you with a deep bow. Well met, Commander. You caused quite the stir. Everyone thought Canabras was done for, but the gods had other plans. Oh, it's quite a blaze over the great garrison. All the other vermin running out with their tails between their legs. Who are you? Vizily Rathamus, former reactor of the Canabras Temple of Abadar, and now your humble servant. In times like these, one cannot serve the gods' cities while sitting comfortably behind a wall. Yeah, they don't even have a... Uh, uh... An altar to this guy. Uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm not even that religious. I don't forgive a fuck. You pursue a sacred cause, and I will help you in any way I can. I await your orders, Commander. Lead us onward to Dresden. I just up on the battlefield. Everyone here has a story like that, but mine is a rather boring one. Believe it or not, it was bureaucracy. <laughs> when the old rector of the Canabra's temple died, may Avatar rest his soul, the church required a replacement. I volunteered and served for 30 years without incident. I prayed, organized festivals and funerals, brought candles, bought candles, sanctified water, boring mundane things that make up the daily routine of civilized society. But then civilized society failed, and it was time for us me to go to war. Praise Avatar to the uh, who led me through the ruins to the Defender's Heart. Who's that boy with you? This one? Gatto, the shepherd, my apprentice. He's a small boy, and his faith is strong. He serves Aristo, though, but there's still something he can learn from an old servant of Abadar be a great cleric when he gets a little older. What kind of help can I expect from you? First, if you need a scroll with a divine spell, I have a lot of them. Something for every emergency. Second, while you're at the camp, I can read any scroll for you. Guaranteed, no surprise. And you better not leave the camp without a cleric. I won't be going with you, so you'll need someone else who can read scrolls. Thank goodness I'm a inquisitor that just happens to be able to read scrolls, because that was such a good mechanic to put on this blast. Go and be have our protective. Let's see here. Captain. Teacher, I just sharpened your quills. Good, good. I could use some quills. And where's my inkwell? Boy. 
Ugh, that kid's gonna need some therapy when he's done. All right. <laughs> That's foreshadowing, by the way. Anyway, uh, da, 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 da. let's see. Here's Sila. Now, oh, now the trouble can obviously pass the time. Just to get... Wait, what? You do remember that we promised to help Elon search for the ring in the branded camp? So that's why you dress up. You should have time to drop by. Oh yes, that's right. That's a quest that's hopefully coming up. Let's see, where I talk to these people. Hey, brother, you're looking pretty thin. All that's supposed to be doing. Wait, you gotta eat, or look like a pair, not long coat of yours. I'd rather shovel horse shit than soldiers grub. Shit smells better. Wouldn't be surprised if it tastes better too. <laughs> I'm honestly, I'm also gonna. I've never served in the military, and I likely never will. Um, I'm I'm thirty. I'm thirty going on thirty nine for crying out loud. I wouldn't be very helpful. But I mean, I've heard talk that military rations are not exactly the tastiest thing. If anybody knows anything about that, feel free to let me know. Also, I am I, I make it a very, very personal habit of mine to shake the hands of everyone who's served in the military, if I ever find out. So if you feel like replying, thanks in advance. Uh let's see here. You know. I mean, I get a love of life. Like, I get a love of a life like this because of all you people, regardless. And I'm, you know, I have no. I'm always willing to support any and every soldier that serves, regardless of how I feel about the war itself. Let's see here. Oh, he nears Nira Dindawar's tent. Nira Dindawar. Oh yes, I. It seems she brought a lot of unnecessary items. I fucking hate Nira Dindawar. I swear to God, I don't know what they were thinking with that character. I mean, I don't want to say there is, wasn't a reason for it, but it's, she's basically like a very, very heavily discounted Lindsay from Kingmaker. <laughs> I'm serious. You'll, you'll see when we talk to her. I'm just, you know, I, I don't even understand what her, the purpose was. <clears throat> and it's not like I hated all that. It's, it's not like I think she's the worst character in the game. She has her, you know, she's kind of interesting in her own way, but it's just like, you could have had any character play the role she played. No, the, the, the game would have been just fine. You, you wouldn't have noticed a damn bit of difference, but whatever. You know. Every one of these Pathfinder games got to have some female halfling bard that's got way too much energy in them. <laughs> and the sad thing is, I like Lindsay. I think Lindsay was awesome. Daron. Ah, there you are, you dashing troublemaker, you. Darren flashes you a self-satisfied smile. Our short acquaintance is coming to an end. Very soon, you will depart on your crusade, or you will scrape by on horrible rations, struggle vainly to fall asleep amidst snoring soldiers, be rudely awoken by the freezing cold, and have to look upon the dour faces of self-righteous prigs before you finally perish in the maw of some demon. I have a journey ahead of me, too. I've just rented a sailboat in the south. I've also hired an excellent chef and a host of other entertainments. Well, to each their own, I suppose. Darren pauses, then suddenly adds a more serious voice. You know, I am genuinely sad to see you go. If it sounds like mockery, forgive me. I cannot switch off my venom gland on a whim, you see. But you intrigue me. If only we could have spent a little more time together. But of course, Darren grimaces, not under these conditions. Let the Crusaders and their demons have at each other. With any luck, they'll take this entire sanctimonious spectacle down with them. <clears throat> if you feel like you don't belong here, go. But I'd like to see you again someday in the future. To get to know you better, you can throw a banquet for me to celebrate our victory in Dresden. What do you say? Victory in Dresden? <laughs> Your optimism is so charming. Darren smirks, then seems to start slightly. He continues in a more evil tone. Well... Should you prove lucky enough to survive by some miracle, come and find me. Perhaps I shall even remember you. No promises, though. In any case, I intend to wait until the army departs. I do love a good send-off, especially when it is I who is staying and someone else who is heading off to meet a dreary and hopeless end. Sometimes it does one good to ruminate on the unfairness of life. Well then, farewell, Commander. I assume I shall be your most precious memory on this most disgusting and exhausting road to the pointless slaughter of battle. 
or if not the most precious memory, then at least the most stirring. Dayron smirks before instantly losing all interest in you, or at least he pretends to. Ah, getting back into the roleplay mind of things. <laughs> if there's one thing I always liked about Shadowheart is that she always tended to find most people, at least those who weren't Lazel, amusing in some way or another, you know. She wouldn't obviously just automatically approve of everything they did, but... As someone who valued the idea of having a mysterious background, there's no doubt she found people like Asterion to be rather intriguing in their own way. Even if she wasn't exactly turned on by the idea of him being a vampire. And then let's see, let's talk to a couple of these people. This is supply train, this is our quartermaster. We'll start going. Let's go to him for supplies. Mm. Yes, yes, three cheers for the commander. Now answer my questions. Where are the mail shirts? According to the paperwork, we're supposed to have 50. I personally deposited the money for them in the army's treasury. Great, it's this guy. Alright, fine, we'll talk to you, I guess. <sighs> the queen is expecting you, so I shall not detain you. We can talk later after our sovereign departs. And why is there a heart attack in a barrel service but supposed to be filled with corned beef? I demand answers! Well, there's heart attack because it's the military, dipshit. Alright. The burly soldier with an impressive beard greets you with his breast smile. Well, Sir Garms, the camp quartermaster at your service. How may I be of help? Yep, he gets his own portrait too for some reason. You know, it's funny that some of the NPCs get their own portraits, yet a lot of them don't, so I can kind of see why some people went ahead and put mods together for him, but it's never really bothered me all that much. I kind of like the idea of only specific people having portraits, just so you know who's important and even who could be a companion. Anyway, tell me about yourself. The quartermaster looks away sheepishly. There isn't much to tell, really. I was born in Canabras in a humble family. I got an education, taught myself to read and write, got drafted into the army, spent year three years as a shield bearer on the first line. I left after I did my time and joined the Stonemasons Guild, then moved on to the shipwrights and rose to, to a crew chief. Sailed to Ayabaria twice and earned with goods. Made some money, built a house, but I haven't started a family yet. I think I will after we are done with this war. About a few years ago, something started gnawing at me. I got this feeling like I needed to go home. There was a storm headed from my native city. And when there's trouble in Mindev, there's only one thing to do. You go to the recruiter and sign up for the army. And so I did. At first they wanted to make me an infantry sergeant, but then they decided I'd be a better fit in the supply department. I could take care of army property, and I'm pretty handy around a warehouse, not to mention I know how to manage a band of helpers. And so that's how I became a quartermaster. Wilson gives you a shy smile and shrugs, as if this were a wholly unremarkable story of any typical of any crusader. I think it's a pretty awesome story myself, actually. What are your duties in this camp? Uh, a little bit of everything? What's an officer to a soldier? Strict father. So what does this make a quartermaster like myself? Something like their mum, that's what? I make sure the lads have everything they need to defeat the enemy and come back from battle in one piece. Wilson starts ticking off his fingers. That means food, firewood, medicines, tents, mended clothes, fixed weapons. The horses have got to be fed and watered. The camp's got to be fortified by the evening, broken up by the morning. I make sure the wages are paid on time and the wagon wheels don't squeak. And then there are reports. God, do you ask? I never realized how many duties I actually had. What do the soldiers think of their new commander? They mostly tell tales about your unusual power, but they don't shy away from talking about you as a person, too. Soldiers are always like that. If Iomide herself descended from heaven, you'd bet they'd jab her on about how she grips her sword and how good she looks in her armor. The soldiers believe the gods favor you, and that it wasn't a coincidence you gained your powers in the Great Garrison. Who else could something like that happen to except for the gods' favorite? So what you have? Okay, so, alright, first off, bulk selling, obviously. And then I'll start selling this. While I'm selling this, um, I'm not really going to make a huge effort to buy all the stuff. I mean, we you tend to find some really handy equipment just going out on adventures. So, it's going to start. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the biggest reason is there's a certain uh, assassin that I might have run into in Canabras that I'm likely going to run into again when we eventually retake Dresden. Uh, I might see who might need some of those. And... 
if you want to hire the guy, he costs a bit of money. And that's if you do his uh, side quest. So, you know. Yeah, a lot of things to sell, unfortunately. Uh, not this. We're keeping this. Obviously. Absolutely. And I don't have any... I don't have any plans to make one of those, but yes. Go ahead. Get rid of more of these. I mean, it is amazing how many of these weapons you run into. <laughs> Freaking other others. I'm going to keep the magic stuff for a while. You never know. We might need some of it. I'm sure when the horses come around one of those. Oh, I'll have to find whoever uh, sells potions, too. Uh, this guy also sells arcanes. Oh, no, wait. That's my stuff. God fucking damn it. <laughs> no, this is his stuff. Um... Yeah, it's primarily weapons, armor, shields, all sorts of stuff. There are some stuff that I might look into, um, but again, we'll have to see. There's a really good looking shield. Yeah, um, yeah. Definitely lots and lots of good items to find. Um, okay, uh, so let's deal. See, so yeah, I'm not, I don't know, let's see. I think there was a really good suit of armor that I found in my, uh, let's see. Yeah, so we'll have to wait until she gets more strength, unfortunately. But I have found a few, uh, magical belts, uh, running around here and there, so. Let's see here. What are you wearing, my darling? You are wearing unbend. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're, yeah, you're a dexterity character. <laughs> I almost got her full <laughs> I was thinking of my, uh,. Let's see. You're wearing full plate, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with uh, splurging on some, you know, because we don't really find a lot of full plate anywhere, unfortunately, so. Uh, being said, though, let me uh, go over everybody's. Oh, yeah, and, and uh, of course, some characters did not get their everything really set up. I'll worry about that when I need have need of them. Uh, request one. Yeah. I mean, enemy armor class tends to fly through the friggin' sky in no particular. in uh, every sense of hurry, so. Let's see here. Um, let's see, you have a masterwork. You have a masterwork. And you have a masterwork, right? Yeah, I could probably get rid of all of those. Um. You have the light crossbow of Oracle's Misery, which is, you know, perfectly fine. Okay. Now, I remember, uh, in addition to their fists, these guys tend to be good with, uh, quarter staves, I think. I don't know. But yeah, we got him a dandy belt. Um. Yeah, I was thinking about possibly making this guy a dex focused character instead, but I don't know. That's really good. That's just a, anyway. Um, your supply would do any wine shop proud. Does <laughs> Crusade really need this much alcohol? Don't think I'm trying to encourage drunkenness among our soldiers. It's all in good fun, a way to blow off some steam. When soldiers can gather by the fire and raise a cup to honor both the living and the dead, it reminds them that life goes on. But those who drink to excess or to the detriment of their duties won't get a drop from me. There is no sight more depressing than a drunkard. Ain't that the tooth? All right. Now, let's see here. Yeah, her dexterity is going to be way higher than that. It's not gonna work. Okay. So in that case, I think I will go ahead and get Yeah, it's not even that expensive really, so I'll get one set of full plate mail for thing here. And let's see, you you can wear a light armor. Yeah, I, I like what he's got right now, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, we have regular leather armor. I will double check your dexterity here in the Let's see here. You can't wear armor because of the claw. 
he can technically wear armor, but if he does, uh, his wisdom bonus to his armor will be cut in half, so think of, think very, very carefully before you put anything on him. And we also have a ring of protection plus two, which is a kind of expensive. And then, uh, left circle gloves of dueling. Yeah. Okay. Now this is pretty good. Mithral chain shirt plus two. Super light. Half as uh, heavy as any of its regular. And then Mithral breastplate. Hmm. Damn. They had more money, but anyway, we'll just steal this for now. Okay. Uh, where did it go? Cause we kinda need to make a tank out of this lady. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. And also, I might get rid of one of her weapons. Uh, one or two of her weapons. Let's see. Yeah. And the funny thing is, even though she's got focus in Bardiches, a plus two of this weapon still gives her a decent uh, attack rating regardless, so... Yeah. And the only thing I hate about this Icebreaker is that it requires... It leans on critical hits, so... I'm planning on giving everybody that needs it uh, some critical boosts, because that's just, you know, something you want to do in this game. But, uh... Here you go. All right, all right. I've jabbed on long enough. I think. Let's see. Wolfrig land. I've, I've pretty much talked to everybody in terms of their. And I'll and I'll have to go into the commanding tent first before I can get any more information. So. So yeah, let's go on in and plan us a war. Come on in, Scratch. You're welcome. Because I say you are. I'm the commander. I can do whatever I want. Oh, you sound like an asshole already. Hello! The queen greets you with a stare. She has dropped the pompous air with which she just announced the fifth crusade. The face of the ruler of Mindef appears calm and thoughtful. She has made her move and now awaits her opponent's reply. Commander, she gets quickly to the point. I am satisfied with the troop review, but I do not expect they will be sufficient for the task. You will have to prove yourself a shrewd leader and hire the necessary troops with the provided funds. Mm. That reminds me. After we get out of here, we'll have to talk to uh, Irabeth about that. I have chosen a target for your campaign, and that target is Dresden, our lost outpost within the world wound. The Sword of Valor was kept there, a banner that was once carried by Iomade herself. Our greatest relic was lost when the city fell. I should make one thing clear from the start. The Sword of Valor is no mere symbol, but a powerful weapon against demons. The holiness of the banner weakens them and robs them of one of their most dangerous abilities, teleportation. You know, I gotta say, demons rarely use that shit. A forced march to Dresden awaits you. The Sword of Valor is kept somewhere within the Citadel. The demons probably think it's a hunting trophy. Its recovery is just as important as retaking the city itself. I hope the task is clear. I'm sending two specialists to help you along with the soldiers. A historian, Nura Dendua, and a cleric, Sozial Bainik. A queen nods to the human man and a young halfling woman standing next to her. One of the famous inquisitors of the Church of Iomade also wants to talk to you. The Honorable Leota, whom everyone calls Hawkblade. That'll be important for a side quest. I do not wish to keep you, Commander. The matter I must discuss with you is extremely important, but it is not directly related to the Crusade. You no doubt wish to meet your new comrades and speak with Her Majesty. Therefore, I shall leave you now. But I ask that you seek me out in the camp at your earliest convenience. Hi! Listen, it's amazing here! It's like I'm in a ballad! There's knights in shining armor, deadly dangers, glorious feats! We are going to show those demons! I'm so tired of sitting in a library reading books about history. It's time I took part in it! <laughs> ah, one of these developers was a fan of Disney. I'm glad to help our cause, Commander. If you have some time later, I'd like to speak with you further. You'll have plenty of time to talk. You're the Knight Commander's people now. 
her trusted advisors and companions. Now then, will you please leave us? Erebeth, you can go too. Who are you talking to? She already left. <laughs> when we met at the Defender's Heart, I never imagined you'd make me the commander of that new crusade. Some actions may be deemed bold or even extreme. And beyond those, there are some you might call the Queen's last resort. I am not a simple monarch. I am at war with the Abyss, a war which has lasted over a hundred years. I cannot allow myself the luxury of caution. In you, I see a chance, and I am willing to stake everything on it. You know, monarchs tend to have advisors on this sort of thing. I'm not even going to say anything anymore. However, you cannot blame me for putting you in charge of the crusade. Yes, I can. I only formalized what had already happened in the hearts and minds of many. People spoke of the power that descended upon you and helped you save the Wardstones from corruption and total destruction. Word of this feat quickly spread far beyond the borders of Mendev. There was no other person who could better fit the role of Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. I mean, seriously, we can totally blame you for this. You literally said it yourself! Oh my goodness. I have some questions about my mission to retake Dresden. Of course. I shall answer. How did the demons manage to conquer Dresden? No. That's a good question. Its walls were built by dwarf craftsmen, and the power of the Sword of Valor protected the city. Alas, where raging hordes failed, a single line tongue was all they needed to succeed. The demoness Minago convinced a young and ambitious crusader named Staunton Vane that the banner belonged on the battlefield. He went on a daring and unapproved raid, and the banner ended up in the enemy's hands. The city fell soon after. Ever since then, for seven decades, it has served as a citadel for the forces of the Abyss. Staunton Vane. I saw him at the Grey Garrison. He defected to the demon side. Oh, really? I wasn't informed of wow, this. Wow, that's stupid. After Dresden fell because of Staunton, he was nearly sentenced to death. He deserved it. In wartime, men are hanged for far less. But you have no idea what a terrible sight it is. A raging crowd of crusaders baying for blood. Never have my fighters looked so much like the demons we are fighting. I commuted Staunton's sentence and stripped him of his rank. Not just for him, but for my army and my country. We are not Hell Knights. We do not maintain discipline with public executions. You shouldn't have stayed your hand of justice. If he died, he wouldn't be betraying you again. Be being betraying you again now. Justice was nowhere to be found that day. The army had become a mob, and the tribunal was a prelude to what that mob craved. Bloody carnage. I am the Queen of Mendev, and the leader of the Crusades. Justice served on my behalf cannot look like that. Honey, there are some times where you're just going to have to realize justice has to take a backseat. What forces are at my disposal? Everyone we saw today at the parade. First among them, the Eagle Watch, who remain a powerful force thanks to Erebeth's resourcefulness. Also marching with you are several minor knightly orders as the minor volunteer units like to be called. And finally, I have personally selected some recruits from Neurosian. They have little in the way of battle experience, but great determination and a thirst to prove themselves. I've always thought that an army benefits from at least one such unit. Let's make sure to keep them last. These forces, as I said, are not enough for a march on Dresden. You will have to hire additional troops with the funds that have been provided to you. But for a brave commander, and I hope you are one, that is just the beginning. If you retake Dresden, recover the holy power of the Sword of Valor, and gain a foothold in the region, then new armies will join under your banner. The Fifth Crusade is only beginning. Many battles and victories lie ahead. It's been decades no one has managed to retake the city. Why do you think we're different? We have a chance now that we haven't seen in decades. But it's more than that. You created this chance for us <laughs> by foiling the demon's plans in Canabris. The army who attacked the city came straight from Dresden. Demon hordes from the Abyss are usually encamped there, but many of them perished on the streets of Canabris. We must attack swiftly before they can restore their forces. 
When the city is free and the Sword of Valor appears before our soldiers, they won't be sending in any more reinforcements. Demons cannot teleport into an area protected by the Banner of the Goddess. What about long-term goals? Do you know how to get rid of the world wound forever? Now you are talking like a real knight, Commander. Excuse me. However, answering your question is not easy. To win this war, we must bar the demon's way. There are a few planar rifts leading to the abyss across the territory we call the World Wound. The best specialists we could find have tried to close them on separate occasions, with no success, as you may have guessed. The World Wound is more than just a chain of portals to the abyss. We do not understand its nature yet. The methods of rift closure known to magical science simply do not work here. However, we have a hypothesis, and a rather well-grounded one, that we must begin at the source of the problem, the place where the world wound was opened. The main rift lies through the city of Iz and the threshold fortress deep in the former lands of Sakoris. We have never managed to fight our way so far and gain a foothold to allow the mages to explore the origins of the world wound. So, the next step, after you succeed in Dresden, is an offensive push deeper into the world wound, with the aim of reaching threshold. The very threshold of the abyss. Did you really just call them matches? I have no more questions. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I got some more now. Do you know that the souls of angels from heaven are confined in the wardstone? I had guessed as much. Many angels fought alongside us in the First Crusade. Heaven was unable to mobilize its full might to aid us, but individual celestials volunteered to fight for our cause. Then one day, they all vanished, saying that they were setting off on an important mission. Not long after, Iomedes Herald erected the first wardstone in Kenobris, and then the others in cities across Mendev. Even back then, I had nagging doubts, but my faith in Iomede easily assuaged them. It is for us to serve the goddess, after all, not to question her works. In any case, I am glad you did not allow the demons to commit sacrilege and gain control over the wardstone in Kenobris. We might have lost one of the wardstones, but the chain is still standing. You know, you should know I received an unusual gift in the caves beneath Canabras. In a vision, I saw the death of an angel called Lario. Somehow, he was able to grant me the ability to, rec to reveal the light of heaven. Lario? I knew him. He disappeared shortly before the world wound grew, and Dresden fell into the enemy's hands. In the chaos, we had more important concerns than investigating the fate of a single angel. Even one so righteous and beloved as Lario, and afterward, matters took a turn for the worse. The angels left us to go on their special mission. It is so strange to hear the names I used to hear when I was young. Like getting a message from the past. It is sad news, but it brings me back to the times when we strongly believed in our victory and we rushed headlong toward it without fear. Could it be that such times have come again? Could be. Uh, do you remember this? I thought this relic was destroyed many years ago. How strange it is to see it whole again. At one time, it gave me hope. I am pleased that this object will serve the crusade once more. I had a vision of Iomini giving her covenant to you. I was young and did not fully understand the magnitude of the duty that had been entrusted to me. Iomide gave me hope and strength to see me through the trials ahead. And in so doing, she won my everlasting loyalty. Do you still remember the blood oath you swore? The blood oath? Do you still remember the oath you swore in battle? Always. No matter how arduous, no matter how dark the skies, no matter how much blood flows from my wounds, I shall stand with you. We shall fight for our loved ones and our friends. For the right to live and die free. We shall do everything we possibly can. And after that, we shall begin to do the impossible. And if the hour should come when our arms can no longer raise our swords, our bodies will become a shield to cover those who still have strength to fight. I, Golfrey, Queen of Mendev, swear this to you. This is my vow. You withstood a blow from a Relu Vorlash in that battle. 
I would proudly declare that to be true, and say that even Arilu Vorlesh could not kill me on her first attempt, but to do so would be boasting. I was protected by my goddess. However, I was glad to see that, no matter how great the betrayer of humanity's power, it is nothing as compared to Iomide's might. Now, from what I've seen, I don't know if handing the covenant over to her is required for her romance to work. Um, I'm going to do it regardless, just because I feel like <clears throat> Shadowheart would want this to belong to the queen as it's hers. Um... But I wouldn't be surprised if doing this helped, you know, ensure the likelihood of the queen, you know, accepting your romance in the future. And again, like I said, I'm going on the devil path. I'm going to make sure she signs that contract. I don't know if it matters whether or not you're romancing her to make the contract work. I just have a funny feeling it might improve the odds. I don't know what the DC's for persuasion attempts would be like then. But anyway. Hand over the Covenant of, of the Inheritor. Please, take this gift. The Covenant of the Inheritor should belong to you. Let the Covenant's restoration into my hands be a good omen for this war. I thank you. I shall ask the priests to offer prayers for you, that Iomade may send you strength and fortitude in the coming battles. What are you going to do? Overlooking a spot of insubordination just at the moment. However, I shall answer you. I shall prepare the defenses at Nerosian and all the other border cities and plan the future of the Fifth Crusade. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Knight Commander? I mean, I'm literally, I'm simply asking you what your plans are for the war. I don't know why the hell that's insubordination. You're the one who wanted me on this path. Anyway, lawful requires you on mythic path. Does the Church of Iomedy really spend so much effort prolonging your life, Queen, just so you can watch the battle from the rear? You're the living banner of the Crusades, and your duty is on the front lines. It's been a long time since anyone tried to talk to me quite like that. Like an interrogator at a trial. I know, right? It's almost like I'm part of the military. I don't know if you realize what you're suggesting. If our enemies in the depths of the wound were to discover that I was with your army, they would immediately send their most vicious demons to attack. They would stop at nothing to be rid of me, and thereby sow chaos across Mendev. But, you are right. I shouldn't be sitting it out in the rear. I am a warrior queen, and a queen of warriors. Yet my fighters have forgotten what I look like. Fine. I shall join the crusade, but on my own terms. First, I shall assemble my entourage and lead the parade out of the camp. I shall catch up with you later, along with a few hand-picked bodyguards. We'll change our armor, and I'll become a knight of a minor order, and join the troops incognito. Until we approach Dresden, no one should know I am among you. But before we storm the city, I shall show myself to the troops and join the battle. Let it be a surprise for the demons. I hope you won't complain of my company on the road, Commander, since you were the one who insisted upon it. <laughs> Do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah. What in the world would I have to complain of you for your company on the road? You shouldn't out yourself like that. The task is clear. Splendid. Ah, yes. We have one final matter to attend to. It should be rather enjoyable. <laughs> I'll admit, it is pretty damn enjoyable. Okay. Count, there you are. You received my instruction. I did, though I did not have time to read the thing before I was dragged before your majesty. In truth, I was readying myself to depart. No matter. I trust you will forgive your sovereign for the rather brusque summons, especially when you learn what prompted it. As you are aware, she has recently been appointed my Knight Commander of the Fifth Crusade. I spent a long while pondering whom to appoint to the highly sensitive post of Commander's Field Attaché and Advisor Plenipotentiary without portfolio. Congratulations, Count. Second title was totally made up. It is a great honor, I suppose. Daren's cool expression wavers, but he seems not to fully be fully cognizant of what is happening. That, or he is holding himself tightly in check. Rather frivolous gesture for our queen. The adequacy of any measure can only be assessed against the reason that prompted it. Isn't that so, Count? 
I had my doubts about whether you were ready for such a responsibility, Count. But your conduct in Kenobris has put my mind at ease. So, you will travel with the troops to Dresden. Only the commander may remove you from your post. But I trust that you will dutifully fulfill her orders and make a good showing of yourself. Especially since word of your appointment, Count, will reach the court at any moment. All of Mendev's nobility will be following your successes in service to the nation, including all of your devoted admirers. I even heard that one bard with whom you are particularly friendly has already begun composing a ballad to honor your heroic participation in the crusade and your faithful service to the commander here. I'll tell you what, I don't think that highly of the queen, but man, she knows how to blackmail people. Your largesse truly knows no bounds, dear cousin. I am most, most gratified by the honor you have shown me. The Count offers a bow, either as a sign of respect or in order to hide his flushed face. Only the barest quaver can be heard in his voice. Then let's get going. May Ayomade help us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you too, Amade. Whatever your name is. God, I can't talk. Beginning of a long road. Hmm. That reminds me of a... Uh... The title of an old video I did about about a year ago at this point. Uh, I'm getting old. Anyway, so I'm going to go over here and all the things I plan on keeping, I'm probably just going to go ahead and put here. Uh, we'll hang on to Radiance. That's going to be important for a quest. Later on. And then let's see what else. Oh, yeah, I'm also going to toss all my books in here. Let's see, can I? No, damn it. Okay. It's fine. If I have multiple copies of books, I have multiple copies of books. I don't freaking care. Let's see here. If anything's notable, I'll probably hang on to it just in case a uh, horse needs it or something. Let's see how it in case. You know, I'm also kind of baffled why the ale isn't uh, considered bulk that I can just toss at the shops automatically. I, I don't see what sort of, you know. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. What do I know? <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. We'll get rid of this letter. A largely destroyed letter. Yeah. Okay. Everything else looks good, I think. Yeah. Okay. So because yeah, I'm I tend to hoard items a lot, and you know, even as I get a hold of uh animal companions to uh try and offset the weight you know there's just not a lot uh one can do as far as let's see here oh wow man we got a lot of shit in this one let's see here the weapons aren't particularly amazing though so just take the stuff that can be treated like trash and uh there we go okay and here's Anivia. I'll talk to her before we go. Let's see, that's pretty much it. It's funny how the uh, the items inside the commander's tent aren't of masterwork quality, yet everything else out there is. Anivia sweeps an inquisitive glance over you. So tell me straight, how that brawl the great garrison int? I heard the rumors, of course. That's kind of my job, you know, to listen. You know of idea you have no idea what cobblers the Crusaders say about you. Some say that Iomade came to you and appointed you her herald. Others say that you died and an honest to God's angel is now leading the army disguises you. Still others say it was just an explosion in an alchemist's lab. And I'm the one spreading rumors about your powers. Huh, I wish. But you know, you really have changed since the Great Garrison. It's hard to describe you, but you've become kind of... Anivia wavers her hand trying to find a word. Uh, more dangerous? Yeah, exactly! Oh, fuck. <laughs> more dangerous. I have a gut instinct about these things. If I didn't, I'd already be dead. You're dangerous, Commander, and by doesn't I hope you're dangerous to your enemies, not to us. Or to yourself. Alright, you watch yourself now. Depending on what path you're going on to, that phrase verse is kind of a... That could be a potential foreshadow. Of course, I'm taking the queen with me, which means I will not be, uh, swarmed that walks. Lucky for her. 
But I do kind of wonder which would be more dangerous. A swarm that devours everything? Or a demon... Or a devil that brings it all under control? Under control. And here's a person who's a I love how she's the one in charge of it now. That's funny. Commander, allow me to say something. Your about looks even more serious than usual. Before you... This wasn't a war. It was agony. Drawn out over decades. No one believed in victory anymore. When the demons attacked the city, for some it was a relief. At least the end had come. They laid down their weapons and surrendered without a fight. I felt the same thing, but I somehow got through his own stubbornness and the vague hope that if nobody found Anivia's body, she might be, by some miracle, have survived. And that miracle was you. You returned my beloved to me when I'd nearly lost all hope of seeing her alive again. Then you went on a suicide mission to Great Garrison and won the city back for us. You turned a defeat into a victory. I know it wasn't easy, but you make everything seem so effortless. You do everything just like that. She says with a snap of her fingers. <laughs> hey, what can I say? Nothing like a burning entangle spell to like <laughs> just make every battle so easy. And the grease spell, I mean, holy crap. I figured some enemies would topple over, but I didn't think that. I, I genuinely thought everybody would have better saves against that in the core difficulty, but mm, what do I know? The Queen believes in your powers, too. But for me, they're just more proof of what I felt that day when I saw Anivia alive, standing next to you. You're the miracle we've been waiting for. You're the one who will finally put an end to this terrible war, and in spite of everything, deliver us the victory we so desperately need. With you, I'm sure this crusade will achieve what the others could not. I found a scabbard with your family name in the Great Garrison. Yerabeth looks down. The scabbard heard the solemn hour. Held the solemn hour. My family's sword. My father once fought with it, and I took it when I left home to become a paladin. Alas, it was not stolen. I parted with my heirloom willingly to help someone dear to me. Anivia needed expensive healing, and having no other way to procure the money, I pawned my father's sword. I think he would have understood. I'm sure he would have given up everything to help the family. I hoped to redeem the solemn hour eventually, but there was never enough money, and soon the sword disappeared from the pawn shop altogether. I have no idea who took it. Seems like I'll have to part way with my father's sword forever. It is foolish to part with your weapon in the middle of a war. Perhaps I acted rashly, but I had no other option. Erebeth lovingly traces the name imprinted on his, in silver in the scabbard's other. My parents were loyal servants, yet it wasn't enough to earn them a title or a coat of arms. Still, however humble our name might be, it is worth something. I don't know if I'll ever see the solemn hour again, but at least I have it scabbard back. Thank you. I think, I think the Solemn Hour is a weapon in this game, and if it is, I will be on the lookout for it. Possibly, I don't know. Uh, so it turns out the Queen has her head of counterintelligence watching me. <laughs> I wonder why. You think the Queen doesn't trust you? If that were true, she wouldn't have put you in charge of this army. My main task is to be your advisor until you've gained enough experience as a commander. As for counterintelligence, and Evie and I were tasked with keeping an eye on your inner circle. But you're not under suspicion, Commander. You're under our protection. We need reinforcements. Can you get us more soldiers? Your Beth frowns. When we began to march in Trezen, we chose to speed speed over our numbers. If I ordered more volunteers to be recruited, they simply won't arrive in time. We could pay mages to deliver the troops to the camp, except I doubt our army's coffers could avoid it. If you can spare seven and a half thousand gold coins, I will see to our reinforcements. Here you go! Consider it done. It's hard to believe that your origin is so humble. You deserve a noble title more than many who inherit them. Erebeth's cheeks blush a little. Thank you, Commander. It is an honor to hear that, especially from you. Every noble family begins somewhere. You must have heard the recent story from the stolen lands in the River Kingdoms. Just imagine, coming from nowhere and making it all the way to a royal crown in just a few years. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I managed to distinguish myself somehow. Then I push to its waist. It's unworthy, selfish thought, of course. <laughs> We don't fight for rewards. The fate of the world is at stake. And yet, Erebeth's blush deepens since she falls silent. So, okay then. So, now, now we can properly talk with, oh, hello. Uh, things, good. Ember is bobbing her head and humming a tune to greet you with a carefree, cheerful smile. Her wandering eyes linger on you for just a moment for darting off again into the distance. How are you handling your new abilities? Abilities? The girl tilts her head his shoulder. What are you talking about? Oh, the tricks you learned when the big gray house blew up. <laughs> big gray house. I gotta love how she talks. They're funny. 
Thanks for teaching them to me. I... Uh, you're welcome. The queen gave me the title of knight commander and put me in charge of an army. What do you think about that? The elf focuses her wandering gaze on your eyes, smiles, and shakes her head. Don't believe titles. All of us in the world are children of the street. Barefoot, hungry, scared. A step away from death. Some imagine they're strong and rich like gods, but don't forget who you really are behind the title. I swear to God, the most childlike character companion in the game has some of the wisest things you can say. Man, she had a really good writer behind her. I have to go. So go! Oh, bah, bah, bah. All right. Let's see. Hello. What's this? Oh, lots of thingies. I will take some of them. Here, take a party anyway. Uh, let's see. Barding. I think my wolf can wear that. Oh, and also, new companion, Social. We'll talk to him real quick. I keep getting my horse right here. Uh, here you go. Oh, look at that. He's got a little saddle. That's so cool. Alright. Uh, okay. Uh, we also have lesser bracers of archery, which, um... <laughs> oh. Land! Here you go, buddy. Uh, there you go. Does one damage one of these demons? Uh, are you bracers of my own? Here, I'll give these to you. Because she's good at killing demons. Alright. Alright. Here's Lan. Brings you here. What do you think of what happened to Grey Garrison? Did you feel a change in yourself? It's hard not to notice when the demons start running away from you like a flock of frightened bats. Power is granted by Iomedi herself to defeat demons. Lan raises his hand above his head and pensively scratches behind his single point. Since I was a kid, I've taken whatever I've been given and used as best I can. Anything goes when you're trying to survive. It doesn't matter where your blessings come from. We can think about that when we're old. If we live that long. But, you know, this time even I'm not so sure. Divine power that just appears out of nowhere? Sooner or later, we will have to pay for it. I'd like to know what the price will be. Very good points. Alright. Do, 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 do. Here's Sila. <laughs> oh! Me. We need to give this to our horse. I think we can give it to our horse? I don't know. Reject. Ah, we can't. That's right, I made it a bully. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. We'll make up for it later. Uh here you go. Hello. So, what do you reckon about everything that's come crashing down on us? All the responsibility command this new power I haven't figured it out yet we'll see what happens next watching and waiting is a good strategy probably <laughs> I'm still frightened by what happened in the gray garrison were we really chosen by Iomade herself <laughs> you know, back when I was a snot-nosed kid who just started down the path to becoming a paladin, I imagined once or twice that I was going to do something heroic. The lights would shine down on me, the trumpets would sing, I'd hear the voice of the goddess, or at least her herald, you know? I'd be informed that I had been chosen for a great cause. But that's the point where my imagination always failed me. Somehow, it really happened. Without all the trumpets, or the herald, or even anyone explaining what I had to do. Though it's clear as day, my place is here, in this demon-ridden wound. Quite a lovely war going on, in fact. Endless, I hear. I'm gonna need some time to wrap my head around this. <laughs> Spare me an hour and I'll crawl into some dark corner and whine about my hard lot. What can I tell you? I cry easily. There we go. Uh, let's see here. This box. Good stuff. All right. And we found something else. What was it? Hello? Hello? God, I hate it when that happens. You just so much as flicker over a purple thing and it's like gone forever, so. And, oh, here, here it is. Ooh. 
What's it? Speed speed? Make canaver speed. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. We'll go And here's our buddy Darren. How do you pronounce his name? There you are. People say that you're deliberately trying Queen Galfrey's pieces. Is that true? Does it even matter? All of Mendevian High Society has declared war on me. They either despise me or they're trying to steer me back onto the right path. And I'm doing everything in my power to keep them on their toes. I relish the prospect of all the fun and of all the fun this mess in Canabras will bring. Darren grins from ear to ear. I shall either commission a song about the great Canabra's fiasco from a certain talented bard, or confuse the jewelers with a rather tall order. A batch of silver dragon toys with detachable heads. Give me a week and they will be in every shop in the capital. Your jokes are silly and childish. If you really want to get your revenge, make your enemies suffer. That is quite dangerous, tiresome, and probably not very fun. Besides, nobody has really pestered me all that much yet. Still... Darren suddenly adopts a more serious expression. I wouldn't mind making the demon suffer. Our righteous society loves to frown upon the torture of prisoners. But they frown quite so much if the prisoner wasn't in question or an incubus or a succubus. So, hi. <laughs> How do you like your new role, advisor? Darren winces. You also enjoy poking me with that stick, don't you? Imagine it. Me, a crusader. If my dearest cousin hoped to teach me a lesson... She managed it perfectly. An assignment I couldn't avoid without losing face. This idiotic journey leading straight into the demon's maws. I could have been on a pleasure boat right now with the loveliest songstress from Pitax on my arms. And a bottle of the finest kiln and wine to keep us company. Incidentally, I blame you for all this. Darren lets out a sigh. Well, actually, I think Cousin Galfrey is to blame for everything that's happened to me. And I suppose some of my misdeeds could be considered my own fault. But I can hardly be expected to take responsibility, can I? Certainly not. Therefore, I shall lay all the blame at your door and plot my revenge. He gives you an innocent smile. Did you also receive a fraction of that unusual power? Looks like it. I genuinely hope that getting away from you would be the end of it. If your gift truly did come from my almaday, the giving me a smidgen of that power was a very subtle joke on her part. I had no idea that our divine light bringer of Mindev even had a sense of humor. Don't get me started on my many acts of sacrilege against her. That obscene engraving, the truth about the test of the Starstone, is the tamest one by far. It, what the hell? Oh, whoops. I, I, I pressed the breast button some. Ow, oh, damn it. I'm back in here. What the hell? Huh, what button did I press? That, oh, I've done that before. It's kind of annoying. All right, hang on. Let's see here. I'll talk to the odor in a second, but right now I gotta talk to this guy. Look, he's doing a painting. Also, some useful stuff here. Hello again. I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. A young cleric stands before an easel, his brush hovering over the canvas without touching it. Instead of painting, the young man absentmindedly gazes at the sky of Canabras, which is still streaked with towering plumes of black smoke. Finally, he notices you and smiles, shaking off a stupor. It's a pity I wasn't there at the Grey Garrison to witness your feats of strength with my own eyes. The flesh, however, could be seen miles and miles away. Some people were frightened of it, thinking that the demons had blown up the remains of the keep. I, for one, knew immediately that it was a good sign. The light above the city showed us that there was still hope. Who are you? And how could you possibly be, be of use to my army? My name is Sozio Vanek. I am a cleric of Shalin, the Eternal Rose and the Goddess of Beauty. Yes, I know that many people would consider me useless in a war. This is not a usual war, though. Just consider our enemy. The Abyss and his demons are the very embodiment of everything evil and ugly in the world. Perhaps a disciple of kindness and beauty might come in handy. I have no doubt that we will win this war, Commander. We just have to. It is our destiny. My role is to help you, and all those standing by your side in this struggle, to survive and flourish. Everyone deserves the chance to find peace and happiness in the world that they are defending so selflessly. 
What are you painting? The cleric's eyes linger mournfully on the canvas. The unfinished painting depicts a temple crowned with a rainbow-tailed bird, the symbol of Shalin. Five people dressed in robes stand before the temple. Men and women, young and old, they all gaze back at you with radiant happiness and joy in their serene eyes. My brothers and sisters in faith. They sent me for help and then... They saved my life, Commander. If the Prioress hadn't ordered me to escape the city and seek help, I would have died right along with them. Instead, I met Queen Galfrey on my way to Nerosian and hurriedly returned to Canabris, only to find my friends dead on the steps of our desecrated temple. I want to draw them the way they live on in my memory. Wise, beautiful, and loyal to their goddess and their city to the very end. I hope you'll last longer than your brethren when the real battle begins. Do not speak ill of them like that. They did everything they could. It's not their fault that the odds were so stacked against them. Now it's my duty to make sure my friends and tutors did not die in vain. I will honor their sacrifice by making this world a bit more beautiful and kind. What made an artist enlist in the army? Perhaps I am a true artist. Or simply an amateur who defaces canvases in my spare time. My goddess is a patron of art, so painting is part of my prayer, and I put all my heart into my pieces. But I am a cleric above all else, so I must also tend to others. I went to war because here's where I'm most needed. Sure, I could be painting idyllic landscapes and offering empty prayers to my goddess, but that won't stop people from dying. My goddess has no tolerance for false piety. You wanted to discuss something with me, right? Yes, I have a personal request. Before we undertake our journey and leave Canabras behind, I would like to visit Martyr Zacharias' cemetery for a funeral. It's not far from here, and it's important. I would like to pay my respects to my friends from the Temple of Shalin who died defending the city. Also, if it's not too much trouble, I would like you to come with me to honor their memory. Their friends and family will be at the funeral and perhaps the commander's personal presence will bring them comfort. I know that you are burdened by many cares right now, so I understand if you can't find the time. But if you could, I would be sincerely grateful. It was a nice meeting. Now I have to go. You must be rather busy indeed. Leading a crusade all by yourself is no joke. I still believe that you are up to the task. This war has been raging for a hundred years, but you've given us a chance at victory. Yay! All right. Okay. <laughs> and also, I'm going to go ahead and do a little work on him as far as his, uh, respecting goes. <laughs> I'll have some fun with that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, and, uh, here is a mysterious elf. Damn it! You again, soldier! Hmm, who do we know that calls me soldier? I saw you talking to the girl hiding her face. What was she and what does she want? I don't know, Commander. She never introduced herself, but I bet she's not a part of our army. I know all our soldiers by name and sight. Wilson frowns gloomily, his cordiality gone in instant. She was looking for some elf volunteer. I wanted to know which tent he was sleeping in. At first I thought she was a messenger from Mindev. She definitely wasn't one of us. But now I see how it all looks mighty shifty. Quarter stat master eyes you with concern. She was some sort of spy then. Oh dear, a spy? We can't have that now, can we? Let's see, stuff. Uh, see, yeah, that's. That club's so cheap it ain't worth selling. Wolf Chief gives you a friendly wave. Hey, Chief, wanna talk? What do you think of my new powers? Wolf Chief pauses to think, rubbing his chin. You mean, what you did back there? I have a few ideas. We could send you to a Pitax underground arena to fight, give you a scary name like Swift Sting or something like that. It's a terrible name. I'll give you a great cover story. Enemies burn down your house. You're avenging your dead family. The public eats that stuff up. You'll wear a shiny, eye-catching outfit. Or a black one if you like black better. Split the prize money 60-40. 60 for me, of course. You know, arranging fights isn't easy. Those people are tough. I'll be taking more risk than you. And after we get set up in Pitax, we'll tour different cities, making some real money. What, you don't like the sound of it? You have any other suggestions? Old Jeff grins, his yellow eyes lighting up. I got one more. Have you heard of Rasmurin? It's some land in the river kingdoms ruled by a king, Rasmir. A friend of mine used to live in Rasmurin. He got out of there as fast as he could. Long story short, this king, Rasmir, of theirs is a god. He keeps his people under his heel, 
They're all terrified of what he might do. He sits on his throne wearing some white mask, giving power to anyone. Yeah, I couldn't take power from me, he says, so long as you believe in me. Wolf quickly checks that no one is eavesdropping. But that friend of mine, the one who fled, has a half-sister on his old man's side who's a cook in the castle, and a washerwoman who the cook hey plays cards with in the evening told her a juicy rumor. Juicy rumor. God, I love those. <laughs> I love the... I know, a friend who a friend of a friend who is... I love those. Word is, Rasmir isn't a real god at all, and he's got no powers. So here's my point. You do have powers. These scary ones, too. We'll find some shabby little kingdom. I'll start some rumors. You'll show off a few tricks wow the locals, and that's it. I'll make you deity. First, I want you to put it in writing that I'll be your chief advisor. I'm not doing anything just on the knot. I've been there. People promise you promise you mountains of gold, and then when it comes to it, they're all, get lost, or I'll set the dogs on you. So you like the idea? You should be punished for your heretical thoughts. Orsif grins assly. That's the spirit. You're already thinking like a deity. Talking about heresy and punishment. Perfect. Look at it this way. You can be proud and poor, or a queen and filthy, stinking rich. You then, you think maybe some Aldori are going to come and offer you a barony because you're such a nice person? Yeah, right. We don't need to wait for favors. We'll grab them with our own hands. I mean, you will. And I'll be sitting nearby giving you advice. I love all the freaking... <laughs> All the freaking references they're making to Kingmaker. Some Aldori are going to come and offer you a parody. <laughs> yeah, well, they didn't offer him the barony because he was nice. They offered him the barony because he killed someone. Anyway, whatever you're free to do, sir, please. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's see here. Not sure what you get. Uh, um, yeah, I call about these. I don't know if he gets anything different. Um... Play more scrolls, all that stuff. Yeah. I might hold off on scrolls for now. I just don't want to, you know, start trying to buy every scroll available. And it's not even a good idea to buy scrolls that I can't use yet. But anyway. And let's see. Here's Camellia. Greetings! The neat smile on Camellia's lips disappear so quickly you almost wonder if you imagined it. So you're Horgus' daughter. You've discovered my most terrible secret. Father cares so much about the Gorm name that you raised me in our mansion, hiding me away from the whole world. I'll always be grateful to my father for everything he's done for me, even if Mendev society disapproves of some of his decisions. Would it be insolent of me to beg for your discretion regarding what you know about us? Camellia's words are polite, but her tone grows cold and sharp. Let us keep this as our little secret. I assure you, my father and I appreciate loyalty and decency. For both myself and my father, I thank you for your understanding. I found another of in a number of interesting implements and accessories in a Gorm mansion. How kind of you to share that you've gone through the Gorm's dirty laundry and drawn some bizarre conclusions. If you value my company, please refrain from making such insinuations in the future. Hey, I'm not the one at the bottom, honey. What do you think of the powers you received from me? Camellia shrugs nonchalantly. People of noble descent grow accustomed to ample opportunity. The powers I received from you are useful, but I see no point in treating them with excessive piety. All right. I will keep... Alright, and then there's one more character I gotta talk to. Let's see. Oh, hot blade! Oh, there you are. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Before I go, we'll grab this food, and then I'll talk to you. Commander, a tall man with piercing yellow-green eyes gives you a brief nod. Let me personally congratulate you on your new title, and thank you for your time in advance. I am Neotra Hawkblade, an inquisitor of the Church of Iomade, the bringer of dit light. Require your assistance in a certain delicate matter. Involving one of your companions, young Count Darren Arinde. Are you one of Prelate Horn's followers? The Elder's face freezes for a moment, but he nods. Yes, of course. What is your opinion on his atrocities? The Elder is silent for a while. Usually people reveal such things about themselves only to their confessor, not to some curious stranger. Still, I did ask for your help, and that imposes certain obligations upon me. Let me put it like this. I spent enough years by Prelate Horn's Holgren's side to learn how to keep him from going over the line. The prelate is an extraordinary man, but he has fallen prey to his own paranoia and monumental sense of responsibility, which has gradually eroded his razor-sharp mind. He has witnessed so much hideous darkness that he now sees it in every shadow. Yet his strength was, and still is, a shield for all the people of Mindev. That is my opinion. His comrades and advisors are necessary to prevent him from making unforgivable mistakes. 
Where were you during the attack on Canabras? I was on a hunt. A very successful one, but as often happens in life, this minor success was a mere harbinger of a larger failure. If I hadn't been so far away from Canabras on this day of the attack, I might have been able to help my comrades and prevent a number of deaths. Alright, uh, what brings you here? I ask that you- I ask you to assist the Church of Biomedy in an investigation of the utmost importance. I understand that the leader of the Crusade uh, has plenty of other matters to attend to, but please allow me to tell you the details. Perhaps it will explain why I am calling upon you. The Inquisitor's open face instantly reveals his feelings. He frowns and looks through, through you, lost his thoughts for a moment. I suppose that you have already heard about the Count Arendae's story. I refer to the tragedy at the Heaven's Edge state. Tell me what happened. About ten years ago, several powerful demons managed to penetrate the Wardstone Barrier and commit mass murder of all the guests who attended the feast in celebration of young Darren's birthday. The unknown magical disease they had brought wiped out the whole estate in less than a day. That was not a unique case in itself. The demons had attempted such raids on Mendevian lands before, but they never dared to target such, target such a well-protected place. The Iron Day family was exceptionally rich. The estate was protected by elite bodyguards, there were several strong and righteous paladins among the guests. Moreover, the revered Nestrin, Daren's tutor, was one of the most powerful priests of Iomedae in the vicinity. All of them died, nonetheless, except for the young Count, who had suddenly manifested his outstanding sacred healing powers. Was that a divine miracle or a curse? That remains to be seen. You're going to investigate this old case again, aren't you? Yes, I am. I have several reasons to doubt the widely shared account of what exactly happened at the estate and how it happened. You see, Commander, I was among those sent to examine the estate after the incident. I saw everything with my own eyes, and I still remember it clearly, even though it feels like it happened a lifetime ago. Heaven's Edge was a unique place that still carried the spirit of old Mendev, Mendev before the world wound, and yet on the, that day it turned into a labyrinthine house of horrors, like something only seen in our nightmares. Apologies for the digression, I wanted to tell you about my suspicions. Everything about the incident seemed odd. Why was the only person left alive a young boy with a newfound talent for divine magic? Why did nobody send to, to Canabras for help, even though the agony spanned many hours? We found the demons dead with their heads cut off when we got into the estate. How were they defeated? How did the disease kill even the paladins present at the estate, or said they would be immune to any disease? If the demons had found a way to penetrate the Holy Warrior's defense, why has this never been repeated since the tragedy at Heaven's Edge? <coughs> You're the only person who can help me here, Commander, because the only living witness of those events is currently serving in your army. Your army's route will take you near the very sites of that tragedy. Heaven's Edge has been abandoned and sealed with potent magic throughout all these years, and only the Count has the power to break that seal. He is unlikely to invite an Inquisitor inside, and in any case, he won't like me sniffing around his family's seat. But if you, as his commander, express your wish to visit the estate, he will be obliged to fulfill it, and I will simply follow you as if one of your attendants. There are a hundred ways, a thousand paths, and myriad loopholes in human lives that the forces of evil can use to their advantage. I am not sure which one of those led the demons to the gates of Heaven's Edge, but I do know it wasn't a simple raid. The kind Crusaders face every day. That incident involved a significantly more powerful entity, and that is why I am asking for your help. We cannot be sure that such a tragedy will not happen again until we recover the, uncover the truth. You've already been to the estate several times. We expect... What do you expect to find now? I was a young and inexperienced Inquisitor when I first visited Heaven's Edge ten years ago. My skills have improved significantly since then, and I have paid dearly for that. The altar makes a vague gesture, pointing out his scars. My arsenal includes many spells and techniques dedicated to gathering information about people and events. Almost all of them required me to be, me to be physically present in the place where the event in question happened. That is why I must return to Heaven's Edge. Why can't you just search the estate yourself without involving me? The estate is abandoned and sealed with powerful containment enchantments that only the Count himself can lift. This is not the main reason, however. The main reason is that Count Arende is not officially under investigation by the Inquisition, so I couldn't just break into his house even if I found a way to bypass his spells. This is a serious matter. The Elder frowns. A matter that threatens the reputation of the entire Church of Iomedae, and my own organization in particular. We made more than enough unforgivable mistakes during the Third Crusade, and are still dealing with their consequences. Your presence will give me my investigation and necessary legitimacy, Commander. But there is more. In addition to getting official permission, 
I'd also like to bring an independent third-party investigator to this case. Someone independent, but well-respected, and you fit the role perfectly. Did you question Aaron himself? I did, but the Count insisted he couldn't remember anything about the incident due to severe shock. He saw the team at the very beginning when they appeared at the celebration to announce the onset of the plague and mock their victims. He also witnessed the death of his mother, Countess Sil Selenia. Selena. That was all he could tell me. The owner pauses. We have found the young Count sleeping like a dog on the floor in one of the rear chambers, having drunk about half the family wine cellar all by himself. There's no reason to disbelieve him on that matter. So you suspect that Darren is hiding something? That he is to blame for the tragedy? I deliberately refuse to entertain any theories or suspicions so that it doesn't affect the investigation. There is a saying among my colleagues that suspicion is the mother of prejudice, and prejudice is married to failure. I can only tell you that Count Arende wasn't suffering from demonic possession, the most common malaise in our country at the time. Prelate Horrun himself examined the boy right after his tragedy, and he didn't sense anything awry with him. Fine, I will help you. What do you need me to do? The author bows his head to you with exceptional reverence. Thank you, Commander. Now I ask you to speak to the Count, and tell him that you wish to see Heaven's Edge. Please do not inform him of my presence right away. I will join your escort when it's time to travel to the estate. When we get there, I will also require your help during the investigation. You will have to follow me, observing my actions as an independent witness. If you have any other questions, please feel free to ask me. I'll remain here for a while. Uh, tell me about, about yourself and question anyone wants to know who I'm dealing with. I am orphaned by birth, but I have lived in Mendef for most of my life, dedicating myself to the service of the Inheritor. My warrior brethren mostly worship Gorum, but I have never been eager to fight for the sake of battle alone. I was a good fighter in my early youth and could easily best most of my peers, but I didn't enjoy showing off my skills. Victory is bland on its own. Purpose adds flavor to war. I can't say that I have always been a faithful sword of my alma day, but back in my mercenary days, fates brought me to the borders of Mindev, where I spent a quite a long time fighting other among the Crusaders. Fighting should shoulder to shoulder with my righteous comrades in arms and watching demons commit their atrocities eventually led me to something that I have been seeking my whole life. Purpose and faith. This is how I found my calling. Even though it may be hard at times, I've never regretted my decision. Alright, that's it. Alright, and that's... Uh, let's see here. I think Darren's not too hard. For, it's too hard. Really? Wow, watch what I'm saying. Damon's not too far from here. I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> uh, I'd love to visit Her Heaven's Edge and see the Arende Estate someday. Oh, I was just about to mention it myself. I've been thinking. Now that I'm in the middle of this whole crusade nonsense, I simply must devise new ways to have fun. With all the recent commotion, my birthday completely slipped my mind. What if we were to celebrate it at Heaven's Edge? It's not far from here, and you'll get to enjoy a banquet in a bona fide haunted house. Darren seems to have trouble getting the words out, which clearly indicates how rarely he has to ask for anything. Since you're my superior, and I'm your advisor, I am obligate, obliged to ask you permission to leave the festivities. And I want to invite you too. I'm sure the commander can free up an afternoon while the soldiers are on leave. Are you really going to throw a banquet at the very place? I think she'd have an Inquisitor's mentality, so... Alright, deal. Perfect! You'll have a ball. I'll make sure of it. Something strange flickers in Darren's smile. Alright. And we are done with that. And I think that's really all the people I wanted to talk to. I know Nuradendawar has a few uh, things to talk about. Uh, let's see, how long have I been playing? Let me check. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've been playing for more than long enough, so we're going to go ahead and call it here. I'll try and squeeze Nira's uh, conversation at a later date. But for now, that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, I wish you interesting adventures. Take care of yourselves.